uh, with the next speaker is Paola Rauhala, a PhD, PhD student at the University of Tampere, Finland, or Tampere, is it? Um, under supervision of professors Vesa Oitinen and Ar Arto Leitinen. She has published interviews, translations, and reviews in Finnish journals and uh, co authored an article entitled Evald Ilyenkov's Dialectics of Abstract and Concrete and the Recent Value Form Debate, together with Professor Oitinen. And incidentally, um, uh, Ilyenkov is also one of the subjects of an article in the next issue of Socialism and Democracy, along with Vygotsky, there's kind of Soviet Marxist, uh, creative Soviet Marxist that uh, belie the stereotype of, a, of an empty Soviet Marxism. It's an interesting article in the ne our next issue. So, Paola Rahala. It depends on the time. It was advertised all the time. Well, that's, that's what... Uh, th this is a, a, a product of our collective enterprise. <laughs> I have written the chapter uh, on Finland together with Jussi Silvan and, uh, and now I contrast the history uh, of capital in Finland with what I know about the other Nordic countries. So Finland is usually included in Nordic countries along with Sweden, Norway, Denmark and Iceland. But Comintern included Finland in the section of border states, a group of Baltic and Balkan countries. And indeed, Finnish history uh, differs from the history of other Nordic countries in terms of its relationship to Russia and Soviet Union, in terms of the importance and popularity of communism, and in terms of language. And all these are reflected in the history of capital as well. Uh, Social Democratic Party of Finland was founded in 1899, so some 10 or 20 years later than, than in the other Nordic countries. But the beginning of uh, Finnish workers' movement was very energetic. At the time, Finland was an economically and culturally autonomous part of the Russian Empire. And in the wake of the general strike of 1905 in Russia and Finland, Finnish workers' movement gained a universal suffrage as first in Europe. In the parliament elections of 1907, Social Democratic Party won 40% of the seats, which was a world record at the time. And this parliament established a foundation for promoting Finnish literature, which got its funds from the Finnish government. The la Finnish language was not yet an established language of science and culture. Uh, the elite had spoken mostly Swedish. So the aim of the foundation was uh, translating world literature into in Finnish. A social democratic intellectual, Edvard Gurli, uh, proposed the translation translation of capital uh, for the committee of this foundation, and he promoted it until the decision was taken in 1908. Capital Volume One was translated by Oscar Wilhoff Lohivuori, who would later represent the bourgeois Finnish Conservative Party in the Parliament. He later also worked as a rector of the School of Economics in Helsinki, and today he stands in front of the most prominent business university of Finland. <laughs> the translation appeared as 12 booklets, the first appearing in 1913. To compare, the Danish translation had appeared already 26 year, years earlier, but Finnish was the second of the Nordic countries. The booklets from 2 to 11 probably appeared during the turbulent year of 1917 in Finland. The February Revolution in Russia had caused a power vacuum, and it was filled by armed militias on bourgeois side and on the socialist side. On December uh, 1917, the bourgeois senate, in which the translator of capital, Lohivori, participated as a senator, declared independence, and a few weeks later, on January 1918, the civil war broke out. And hence, already before the last booklet and the complete volume was published, towards the end of the year 1918, the translator of Capital, Lohi Vuori, and the two social democratic members of parliament uh, who had been checking the translation, Edward Gürling and Otto Ville Kuusinen, stood on opposite sides of a terrible war. 
And Lowy reports later that just a few years earlier he had discussed the translation word by word, by word and sentence by sentence in long session with the two, two social democrats. And now Lohi Wari was the senator on the white side, whereas Yuling and Kuusinen were members of the government of the red side, the delegation of People's Commissars of Finland. After the war was lost in May 1918, approximately 10,000 threats escaped into Soviet Russia, and therefore, when the cap whole, of, whole of capital finally appeared in Finland, Yuling and Kuusinen were abroad and with no return. 80% of the victims uh, of the civil war were Reds, most commonly losing their lives in lawless executions or in prison camps after the war. The Communist Party of Finland was founded in Moscow in 18, 1918, and among the farmers was Kuusinen, who later became a top officer of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. And Edward Yulin functioned from 1920 on as a leader of Karelian Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic, which was meant to be the, a cradle of revolution in Nordic countries. The second Finnish edition of Capital Volume 1 appeared in Soviet Karelia in 1933, after Vain Kangas had checked and corrected Rohivori's older translation. And also in other Nordic countries, I'm not showing this, sorry. Also in other Nordic countries, different volumes of capital appeared in the early 1930s. And if the Finnish translator had been an important uh, politician, although he was a bourgeois, very right-wing politician, so were the Swedish Richard Sandler and Norwegian Erling Falk. But they were, of course, social democrats. So capital appeared in early 1930s in all other Nordic countries except in Iceland although the Finnish translation appeared in Soviet Union. Yulin wrote a preface to this edition, and he wrote that the translations of volumes 2 and 3 were planned to appear in Soviet Karelia, since it was obvious that these would not be published in Finland. Because Finland was tightly in the hands of bourgeoisie, extreme right-wing organization, Lapua movement constant, constantly physically attacked uh, the labor movement or the leftists and, and communist organizations were outlawed. But these volumes would not be published in Soviet Karelia either. After the turn in national politics of Soviet Union, it had become for Finnish communists even worse place to be than Finland. Yulin was deposed in 35 before his execution in 1938. And he was, for example, accused for Kautsky's errors in the preface of the 1933 edition. The translation, uh, the translator Gangas was executed in 37, and in the next year the second Finnish edition of Capital Volume 1 was destroyed together with approximately one and a half million uh, copies of Finnish publications published in Soviet Russia. So, it is telling that Yulin's preface is uh, torn off from the few copies one can find in Finnish libraries, and his name is crossed out with a black marker. The fact that thousands of Finns fell as victims of Stalin's terror uh, and the execution of most of the leading Finnish communists during the 30, 30s was later on painful public secret uh, among the Finnish communist movement. But the, however, the destroyed 1933 edition, even if it's unfortunately not mentioned, seems to have served as a basis for the third Finnish edition, which appeared in Finland after the war in 1948, together with the translation of the second volume. The position of the radical left had changed uh, after the war. Communist organizations were legalized again, extreme right-wing organizations were outlawed, and also bourgeois politicians had to assume a friendly attitude towards Soviet Union. And hence, it seems to me that it was an easy task for a communist leader, Mauri Ruama, to get funding for the translation of Capital Volume 2 from the very same foundation promoting Finnish literature. And this means that the taxpayers financed the project once again. Uh, 
Rema had actually started to translate volume two during the World War II in prison, into which he was sentenced due to his anti-war activities during the interim peace in summer 1940. Rema was a leader of Finland Soviet Union Peace and Friendship Society, which organized enormous, enormous mass demonstrations against the warmongering during, during the interim peace in summer 1940. Okay. I will wrap up after this. I just mentioned that uh, the, the translation of the second and first volume were published by the publishing house of People's Democratic League of Finland, uh, a party which, um, after the Second World War, uh, uh, gained um, how many? 40 seats out of uh, 200, 49 seats out of 200 in parliamentary elections, and this success of the communists probably benefited the project. I will leave the rest for you to read from the book. I'm just uh, happy, happy to say that if I... Um, uh, resume the history of uh, capital in Nordic countries, there has been three booms in 1930s, in 1970s, and now, when capital has been uh, has appeared, all the volumes have appeared uh, more or less in all Nordic countries. And I'm happy to live in this third capital boom.